This is the brand new Fiat 500e. This is an all electric version of the Fiat 500 and you're not gonna find a cuter car in the market today, honestly, apart from maybe Honda e, but other than that, that's it. Listen, stick with me, we're gonna get all the details behind the Fiat 500e and actually what it's like to drive as well. Hey look, if this is your first time here, then hit the subscribe button. If this is not your first time here, well, what's wrong with you? Why haven't you joined the party? Hit the subscribe button. It's free. Like, it doesn't cost that for all this content. Anyway, back to the show. So interior is really cool, I have to say. You get these little buttons to open the door with, which are not what you think, but there's actually an emergency handle down low as well in case things go really badly wrong. Seat position is as you expect in a Fiat 500. I don't feel quite as high. These seats are very good. I feel more sculpted into the seat than a normal. Wireless charging trays here in front as well. Very nice little thing. Uh, air conditioning is all here. This touchscreen works very well. Volume control is in the middle for the touchscreen. Uh, there is a volume control in the back of your steering wheel like you would find in a normal Fiat and Alpha and stuff. E-mode, we'll get into on the drive. And then you have another charging port in here and a sort of a storage bin, 12 volt sockets. Apple CarPlay, everything you want. Plus it makes a lovely sound when it starts up. That is straight from Toast of London. And it makes a very disappointed sound when you turn it off. So disappointed, it's like, it's like player one has died. <laughs> Start again. Uh, beautiful seats. You will fit four people here. You are going to be cramped. Fiat 500s have always been small. So a big six foot person behind that seat is going to cause you to sit much closer to the steering wheel. But fortunately enough, Fiat have indeed, if I can find the thing, put in rake and reach on the steering wheel on this one, rather than the old one, which is just rake, just up and down. That's all it did. Now it does rake and reach. It's quite a nice little place to be. Uh, electronically, uh, really only have four buttons. A PRND is just a button. It's just an electronic. There's no gearbox in these things. It's not the same as a normal car. You have an electronic dash in front of you as well gives you a good idea of your range. Range is pretty accurate as well. This is the bigger battery one of the 44 kilowatt hour battery. There's a 24 kilowatt hour battery, half the size. Uh, but this one is the 44, so it's a bit it's a bit further in range as well. We'll get into the range and stuff on the drive. Uh, it charges from the same port as the place. You find the, the fuel tank, there's no difference whatsoever. So we're looking at boot. Boot space, that's not huge, but they never are in Italian cars. But it's got my camera bag fits in, no problem. Other bags, drone, tripods, all fit into it, no problem. You know where to store your cables in this boot? Is that a problem? I think that's the same for every electric car. There's no real place to store the cables on most of these small ones or these more affordable ones. It's going to be fine. You're going to get a week's worth of shopping into this car along with having a back seat for the kids as well, which is droppable by just pushing that button there. Really easy stuff. It's a nice little boot. It'll do you fine. Don't worry. Let's go for a spin. So this is the Prima version, which is the larger of the batteries and more spec in it as well. So it comes with two kinds of batteries. There's a 24 kilowatt and a 42 kilowatt. This is the longer range, one of the two. They say 330, 340 kilometers range. I probably would believe that. It's not far off where I thought it was going to be. It's good, what's bad? I can tell you now, 100%, it has the best Fiat interior I have ever seen. <laughs> By far, the Uconnect system is a joy to use. A joy. Uh, I can't get over how good it is. Also has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's built into the car too. Perfect little touchscreen in the middle. And I have a digital screen here in front of me as well, which also reflects like sat-nav and other kind of stuff as well. You may have noticed while we're driving along that it seems very bumpy in the camera. That's because the only fly in the ointment of this car is actually the suspension system. I can feel the bulk of the battery underneath me. And this is something that all car companies are struggling with lately. They're trying to figure out ways to reduce the feeling of carrying a very fat person around in the back of the car with you. That's what it feels like when you go over a speed bump. It's actually very jarring in this car, no matter what speed there is. It's the only thing though. Everything else is glorious. Okay, so range isn't the best, but I don't really care so much about that because this is a city car. And it means that with a smaller battery, 24 kilowatt or the 42 kilowatt that I have here, 
you don't charge it it doesn't take hours and hours and hours 13 15 16 hours to charge the bloody car from empty it takes four or five hours on a slow charger because a smaller battery and on a fast charger this can charge at up to 85 kilowatt hours or 85 kilowatts at a time now that means that this thing is going to be full in uh, 30 minutes or so depending on the battery condition temperature outside and usual stuff 30 40 minutes to full now getting over the electric bits for a minute let's just look at it as a car I have three modes as I drive along mode one is normal turns on everything turns on all your horsepower uh, turns on a good throttle response it feels zippy the car feels fairly zippy we go into that mode now there's normal on now so I put my foot down I get a good old view behind me and it feels like I'm actually going along very quickly if I go into the next mode which is range what it tries to do is get the maximum range while not making you uncomfortable so it leaves the air conditioning on it leaves on uh, all the system gives a good throttle response everything else stays as normal then there's a final mode called Sherpa Sherpa turns everything off <laughs> Sherpa is about getting a max range reduces your speed to 80 kilometers an hour maximum uh, turns off the air conditioning turns off anything in the car that's drawing electricity from the main battery and tries to make you as efficient as you can and that's the only time that one pedal driving kicks in as well so when you take your foot off you feel like there's one pedal driving going on there the Fiat 500 which goes back a very long way like these cars are so long on the go and I know some of you will probably think that it just took a Fiat 500 but made a battery just put a battery in it I don't need to have but I do think the suspension would be a sort of a deal breaker for me particularly I live in a town with quite a few speed bumps and ramps and things in it and going over them gives you such a punch in the back that it just it's not nice thinking about the upsides though this is a small two-door three-door if you want to call it that um, I won't say family car but it is and in an emergency situation you'll have a good time in this I would debate with anybody whether it's any slower than a, than a Fiat 500 1.2 litre pop it's the same car essentially same size inside they've done a good job of hiding the batteries most of the batteries are in the back of the car towards the rear of the car which is why it feels so heavy coming over uh, speed bumps and big bumps in the road so why would you buy one city dwellers you're driving a small car you see you see these things these Fiat 500s are dotted all over Rome Italy France even you see them everywhere because there's less space in the road and a hell of a lot less space for parking in those ancient cities so there isn't massive multi-stories that are always open all day frequently they're parking into the tiny side streets Italians park down the white line on the road in some cities I've seen that in Milan I've seen that in Florence where they're parked right down the white line in the middle of the road and you may just put up with it because that's that's the size that's all it can do so this will suit city dwellers very well I drove home yesterday at 105, 110 kilometers an hour uh, from City West where I pick up the car to Port Leash. I didn't charge it last night. I got up this morning, still had 50% battery, drove the kid to school, um, got some breakfast, got out on the road, charged the car up then for another couple of hours after that, and I'm back up to like 91% battery. So it's fine, it works fine. Now, I'm on Sherpa mode here, which is one pedal driving. And I'm gonna to have to do this Italian style. I have to open the window. Because Sherpa mode turns off all air conditioning and it's currently 11 degrees outside. It's very warm. So we're gonna cruise, man. We're gonna cruise in the Italian way. I'm about as fashionable now as a kick in the nuts, but I'm, I'm gonna cruise in that Italian sense of things. So you gotta hold the steering wheel, basically over to one side and lean out the window and go, hey, a lot. Not sure what that means. It could mean hello, it may mean get out of my way, it may mean you're very unfashionable, I'm not sure. But there's a speed bump. So to show you if you're sitting properly in the car, speed bump coming up here, as I come up to it now, hit the front of it, then the back kind of falls down because it's just so heavy down the rear of the car. Uh, would I be happy in it? I love this car, I love it. It's absolutely a adorable in every situation everyone looks at you you feel like you're doing something for the environment you're not a slouch by any means you're not going real slow uh, it's nippy enough and it has enough range that it would suit me down to the ground I think it would suit me down to the ground as a second car not maybe as a primary car but if you're let's face it if you're living in step aside 
Ratfarnham, anywhere down that south part. If you're living up the, up the top end of, you know, Swords, Dublin Airport, that direction, you're living up around there and you're feeding into the city centre, you've no reason whatsoever to buy a 500 kilometre Tesla. <laughs> you're none now. You're none. Uh, you shouldn't be buying it. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> Just buy a small. And like, they're not the only ones with these short range batteries. Let's say Honda, the Honda E short range battery. People seem to like that car. Uh, Mazda, is it MX30, I think, does a short range version of the car as well. So they're all kind of pushing because it's very hard and very expensive to get a hold of batteries. And so if you make smaller battery cars, you use less batteries. There's more batteries for other people rather than putting 500 kilometers and everything or putting a 100 kilowatt hour battery into a Mustang Mach-E like they do in Ford, yeah? So you don't need all that sort of stuff. And let's, let's sum up the little Fiat 500e while we're creeping through Port Leash here. It is, without doubt, one of the most stylish cars I've ever seen. It just proportionally wise, it's beautiful. Italian, this fitted finish is just an extraordinarily good interior. Beautiful wireless charger in here as well. It's got everything you ever want. It's a, it, like an Italian solution right there, just to put a wireless charger in front of you. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, even their own system here is fine. It works fine. Everything works fine in that system. It, it's not laggy. It doesn't take time to come up. Little digital dash here works very well as well. There's, there's no downside to this car that I can find. There's no downside to this car. It's small, it's cute, it's reliable, it's lovely. It just works. Stick your arm out the window, put on a bit of Tony Bennett on the radio there and sit back and relax and just enjoy the drive. You won't be going very far, but it's still, it's pretty good though. Listen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've hit the subscribe button at some point in this video because we haven't like, gonna have to ask questions, so why not? How come you come this far into the video and you're still not subscribed? Uh, listen, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this car, on electric cars maybe as well, you know, where we're going with things, what's gonna happen next. Um, you should watch a couple of other videos that are on the channel as well as one I made with Nobby on cars the other day as well. Uh, you can go and watch that. It's about the, the uh, Dacia Jogger. Um, but look, go and watch whatever video you want to watch. You can also watch the one about right off cars as well. It's also pretty good. Thanks very much for watching. And until the next time, I'll see you on the far side.